Yes, sir, Kevin. TGIF to everybody. More than that, to American citizens, good Veterans Day to you. Banks are closed. Markets are open. And when it comes to Veterans Day, you may not like the politics of a battle or a conflict, but you got to be for the troops. That's the way I feel. You got to be for the troops. People that believe enough in what they're doing to actually express the highest form of love to lay your life down for another. And that's what those guys do in their foxholes and in their tanks, in their airplanes. So, and with that, <clears throat> A salute to my uh, boss, Blake Morrow, who served. I'll admit that during the Vietnam era, I didn't want to go. I was fortunate. I had a high lottery number. So I was in the dormitory. You know what I was doing up there. And, uh, you know, college, right? So I didn't have to serve. In fact, anyone from my age group ended up not serving anyway. Uh, even our president, I don't think, wanted to go, but he had bone spurs. So let's keep on the military uh, way and talk about really trading is like being on a battlefield. I use the metaphor. So when you're going to battle, do you want to go to battle alone, be a forward observer? Some people have to do that, but I prefer to be in at least a good battalion or at the minimum uh, be in, you know, a small group. Blake will help me with the terminology, but you have it here. So before you go into battle in the FX markets, here's your strategy, okay? And every military strategy that was successful, even though Eisenhower was the commander in chief of all operations, he had many great uh, generals beneath him, right? He had Patton, he had many great gen Bradley, right? So they were a team. And I liken that to what we have here at Forex Analytics, all right? It's not just one general. In fact, many services, that's all you get. Your lottery number was one. <laughs> Did you go, Michael? Or were you drafted? Oh yeah, that's that's very, oh he had five deferments. All right, Forex Gal did his research. Hello, Bando. So, I mean, look at what you have, you have you have a sharpshooter like Gregor Horvat, and you have a strategist like Nicola Duke, and you have a leader like Blake Morrill. Okay, that's cool, Luca. All right, you know, Steve is always there. He's like the, the sergeant that never sleeps, lets his troops sleep, and he's always at his post. So going into battle, Friday is a great day to subscribe in my extremely accurate and humble opinion. In fact, it's with the greatest amount of pride I'd like to announce how humble I've become. And here's the guys that you have in the foxhole with you. Could you find a better group? Look at this. So I'm going into battle on the FX field against the black boxes and the algos and the high frequency traders. So I need an edge. I can't do it all alone. And that's another reason why we have face, right? And what a great week in face. You know, I came up with a little EG trade. If you didn't make money on that, you need to close your account. Blake, since Monday, was hammering the 
the potential of downside in U.S. dollar yen, the potential of risk off, which is happening today in the markets, even though the S&P is recovered, they're coming in sharply lower. Steve in the middle of the night in Greece goes into the trading room and alerts people to a reversal in the Nikkei. Stelios can always explain the double talk of central bankers. And then there's me, who has an appreciation for what a great team it is because I've been around a while. You're in submarines. How about that, Andy? Interesting. A bomb thrower like Dale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, it would have to be a grenade, Ziggy. I, I don't have the fastball I used to have. So a quick look at a few charts before I hand it over to Steve. And we do have an interview today. Let's see, I was a little surprised that the Dixie did not make a new high. Take out the, the stops above here. It looks pretty lousy. And you know, Friday, what you have to do is you have to go to your weekly charts, right? Because we're going to get weekly candles here in a few hours. So pretty negative weekly candle closing under the close from two weeks ago. That may have been it right there in the dollar. Uh, next support coming in around 93.20. So that's another uh, handle or so. And I wanted to bring up the euro um, really for a head and shoulders breakdown. It is certainly taking its time to pay people who sold this. So, I mean, unless you took the scalp on the retest, they're starting to challenge you again. So uh, this could end up sometime next week uh, being a false breakdown and negate the head and shoulders. Uh, I thought there might be one more drive down than anyone who knows what I look for. Uh, we did diverge down here on the second drive. Uh, Lake had a feeling most of the week, uh, although technicals didn't really say so, of uh, being skeptical of dollar strength and that the euro could rally. So here we go, a uh, pretty positive week. And anyone who sold it to the button, you know, has a 40 pip lead. But that's why I teach, you know, if you had shorted this, you know, you would have taken more than 50 pips using my style, probably wouldn't be short anymore, right? So uh, EG is playing with the off number. Maybe this was it. So uh, I, I may end up being uh, disproven on the confirmed high story. Uh, the off number coincidentally is 88.35. So on a weekly basis, it did not turn off. In fact, it looks like an inside week to me, which it is. So we'll see, maybe we even test this week's lows, a neutral week. Really don't know what to say about it. Here's your Aussie grinding up trend. I know that uh, Greg is looking for numbers down here, 75 ish. So we could be getting close to even a buy in the Aussie here. Um, gold didn't quite break out. Here's the end. Pretty ugly week in the end, as you can see right here. Blake's got a nice pattern and play on right here. So. You need the traffic light page because you want to go on green lights. You want to be cautious on yellow. Pretty interesting concept they came up with using traffic lights. So there's some nice pattern in plays working. Raga bullish Swiss, you know, a very nice entry on this pattern in play from Blake early in the week. Still looking for lower numbers in Euro Yen. And Grega, as I said earlier, looking for a shade under 76 for an objective. Uh, has nice, has a real nice uh, winter working going into the weekend. So 
Here's the team, here's our squad, guys. We're entering the battlefield every day. And I know the webinars are great, and you probably could get by just coming to the webinar because there were great profitable ideas all week long. But there's so much more time left in the trading day every day. And don't forget that uh, we have another, another room going, the other chat room, which is really growing into a company to use another military expression. Okay, thank you, Luca. So with all that being said, I did schedule an interview for today and a very humble, uh, nice man from Ghana. Raymond will be with us at the top of the hour. I hope everyone had a great week. You know, it's our mission to build up and edify traders every day and hope that base is adding value to what you're trying to accomplish as a trader. How about a little validation? Base has been around almost eight months now. Can you say if you've been around for a while, whether or not it has added value to what you're trying to accomplish as a trader? Maybe uh, you learned a new method. Maybe you found some great people to follow that are opening your eyes to trades you never would have seen on your own. Okay, well, uh, we're glad to serve, glad to teach, glad to provide actionable analysis. So take the step from desiring to be part of the team to taking the action of becoming part of the team. And if you're not a member, you could test drive our, our traffic light page for a buck. And with all that being said, um, I'm sure Steve wants to talk about some follow through that we're getting in the Nikkei today and the S&Ps. Um, he had, it has uh, uh, iron testicles. Because, you know, <laughs> he's, been he's been bearish for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Iron steel, I don't know. So, <laughs> something that is. If you, uh, if you stated it a little bit differently, I would, <clears throat> I would, I would start believing that you were actually playing a few uh, decades ago, like Duke Nukem 3D. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Let me use. Uh, at times, with your conviction, you're also courageous. How about that? So. <laughs> You know, congratulations on finally getting some things to, you know, fall and, 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 you know, I never really heard you, you know, a lot of people when they're taking heat, you could tell they're taking heat. And you were actually, the, you can tell a pro when most people are taking heat, Steve, and they're down on a trade, they won't even do anything else. Okay. They won't trade. They're waiting for the opera, the, uh, you know, things to get better and nursing something that's not working. And then they have all this opportunity cost. They let good trade after good trade get by because they're waiting for something else to straighten out. Uh, I mean, you went, you didn't let it stop you. So, uh, so that's, that's, that that's why I, that's why I don't use high leverage because you know, yeah. if anyway, if I admire I admire that in you. Thank you very much. If 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 you let you know. Uh, a trade that's out of the money but still fits your criteria, like cripple you, it means probably that you're using higher leverage than you should. But, right. you know, I, I avoid doing that. I was comfortable with being out of the money. Um, yesterday, actually, I also said to the chat room, I closed part, yeah. part of my, I closed part of my SPX and Dow Jones positions at the money because I wanted to reduce my risk even further because at the same time I booked, that was one of the fastest, I booked 2.6% profit on the Nikkei on part of my position. I initially right. one, one quarter of it and later on I increased a little bit so I've closed one third of my position. Um, so in essence now I have uh, you know two thirds of my uh, Nikkei position running free and um, right. this, this profit also gives me the ability to be um, uh, you know, a lot more relaxed with the remaining um, positions I have on my SPX and the Dow Jones.
Glad you can relax, bro. So why don't you, why don't you show sure, your I charts will. and and maybe you know some some ideas. You know, for me, Steve, I don't know how it is for you. I you know I really rarely initiate anything new on a Friday, but I I use Friday. You know, kind of like taking a look ahead of what I I might have a, a bias to do next week. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, under normal circumstances. Uh, I usually avoid as well, but it's not that I'm going to say no to an opportunity if I see one coming to me, you know, sometimes, right. you know, something knocks on your door, right? Right. Uh, yeah. Sometimes. Hits you yeah. right with the, yeah. But, okay. By the way, uh, let me remind people that Blake is going to be with us in 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, so I'm just okay. going to start first. Um, so uh, the Nikki is showing some follow through. Uh, first of all, uh, we, we, we saw the usual attempt to buy the dip yesterday. Especially in right. the stock indices, in the U.S. stock indices, it, it was quite profound because yeah. we managed to uh, to pair back like more than uh, two thirds of the yeah. yeah of the of the intraday losses. Yes, correct. On yeah. the other hand, that that still left behind um, what we call in candlesticks like a very powerful hanging man uh, pin bar, which uh, is not you know one of the most reliable signals, reversal signals. But on the other hand. It is considered to be uh, somewhat of a reversal signal. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to see if we're going to get any follow through today. Uh, same thing happened with the Nasdaq yesterday. I'm, this is what I was tracking on the Nasdaq, this ascending wedge out of that ascending wedge. Uh, this ascending wedge on the SPX as well. Yesterday, actually, we managed to, ha to hold it uh, on a closing, uh, on a daily closing basis. But today, we, we might actually fall uh, below it. Now, having to do with the Nikkei, um, we're seeing clear intent to have follow through today because we we have tested the lows once again. Um, I have some uh, ascending channel support a little bit lower. I'm guessing it's ah, 150 handles lower roughly. But I think that you know this reversal that we already got on the um, Nikki and if nothing changes, this is the weekly as well. This is a huge huge key reversal on the weekly as well a huge shooting star with a with a very very long upper week uh so i think that the nikki looks very nasty at the moment and you know this correction lower might might unfold further that's why i also closed uh you know part of my um spx and, and dow jones positions because uh it seems like uh, at least for the time being the the nikki is you know is ready to uh, to, to, to move lower, we don't know what's going to happen with the U.S. Uh, indices for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, Nikki, as I said, looks, you know, since yesterday, it, it looked like this, this was some kind of a short-term blow off top. And uh, obviously, you know, if we close the week roughly where we are currently, uh, definitely there's going to be a lot of investors uh, rethinking during the weekend. Right you know, their positions there, and that might I help. I have uh, one comment, uh, Steve, and you know how technicians can be anal. That's why they're called technical analysts. That um, the weekly candle on the Nikkei, at least not yet, is a reversal week, but for it to be a key reversal week, it would need to take out last week's lows. I don't think that happened. Yes. Uh, no, that's that's actually not the definition. The definition of a key reversal is um, uh, op opening at the highs, uh, pushing fresh highs or fresh lows uh, at a at a, at a well-established trend and then closing lower. Oh, that, I, I yeah. had a different definition that it had to be an outside week after no, no, a major no, move. Of course, of course, as you understand, if it's also an outside week. Even better, right? There is no question about it. It makes the signal okay. even, it makes the single signal even stronger. Stronger. And I'm throwing my Edwards and McGee technical analysis of stock trends out today. And even right. even by even by that definition, there is no question that we had an outside uh, day at least on the daily yesterday. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, a huge, right. huge outside day because uh, just to give you an idea, yesterday's range was the biggest one we've seen after no surprise there uh the, From range the bottom. Got, uh, yeah the range we got here guess what was back there at the 8th yeah. of uh, november the year selections right 
So um, this was the biggest range we got since then. That day marked that day marked uh, the bottom of a whole year. I mean, year to uh, I mean, uh, you know, 365 days later, we have never traded lower than that. And now we got another huge day. Uh, daily range and it was a bearish reversal and let's see what that's going to bring but my guess is that you know under normal circumstances it should be at least good enough for a deeper correction I, I said that yesterday as well if you remember um, I said that in the chat room when we when we were uh, just an, almost unchanged ba barely negative um, that night and uh, I, I still believe that uh, you know um, Nikkei should pro, should give us more weakness before attempting to to go higher because you know there is no question about it this this has been a very powerful trend and you know i'm i'm inclined to treat this move lower as a corrective move because you know it's irresponsible if i i, I treat it like you know that was the top that's it a bear market is beginning so i'm you know until proven otherwise i'm treating this as a correction but even by treating it as a correction, even if I want to treat it as a correction uh, on this little short term move higher, just if we draw a fib here, you'll see that even if we just want to retrace 38.2, uh, 38.2 is like 700 handles lower. Then we currently are six six hundred and fifty handles lower than we currently are. We're currently testing the twenty three point six, by the way. So this this might be significant, uh, but I doubt it. We after this kind of a huge uptrend, we're going to stop at the twenty three point six. So my intuition tells me that we we should move lower to to at least test the thirty eight point two. Okay, uh, the market is going to show us what's what's the case, but you know that that's that's how I say it. <laughs> Uh, so other than that and other than indices which uh, let's see what kind of follow through they can uh, provide logic tells that you know we, sh we should have a few more days of a downtrend I have to say that the um, the, uh, the FX market has been rather quiet the only real event we've had is the USD yen uh, breaking below the wedge but uh, to be honest this also hasn't brought any acceleration uh, 113, uh, 113 uh, level, which is the first support, did hold yesterday. We didn't actually test it. We we, we came 10, 10 pips close to that, but we we rebounded of that, and um, that that gives us the potential to to push lower towards perhaps 111.60 to 112. But we need to see some acceleration here as well. Other than that, the the DXY suffered a, uh, you know, one of the biggest losses it has given us. You know since we started this uptrend, but, uh, yeah. you know, we, we still have not invalidated the uh, the bullish potential here. Okay, I mean, uh, the bullish potential in the sense, as I've said many times, I'm not bullish uh, the dollar in the medium to long term, but I do think that this uh, short term correction can uh, push higher, perhaps towards the 38.2 or the 200 DMA or a little bit lower that we had some horizontal uh, support that might act as a resistance here. So, um, despite seeing uh, weakness, I'm still not convinced that the DXY is uh, over and done uh, with this uh, correction. We can also, we can also, if we want, monitor this trend line. There we are. So this isn't broken as well. Uh, so 94.20, 94 to 94.20 is a horizontal uh, support in this case. We also have this ascending trend line uh, passes more or less from the same levels. So this is what I'm monitoring. Unless we break below there, uh, for me there is uh, there's no uh, reason to to even discuss uh, the possibility of uh, the dollar uh, turning lower. Okay, if we if we get a break below there. And we confirm it on Monday, and then we can have a different discussion about uh, the dollar. Now let's 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 have a look at a couple more uh, of the popular pairs, and then uh, I'll go through some of the questions until Blake is here. Um, first of all, cable, nothing to do here yet. 
we're still trading within what seems to be like a triangle. Um, so, you know, no idea what's going to happen from here. Logic says that it might break to the downside because the prior move was to the downside. But, you know, this, this is roughly a big range and, uh, you know, as long as we're trading in the middle of it, you know, there's not much to do. I know that a lot of people have been monitoring this little rebound in the EURUSD, but we still haven't even uh, put here, a, uh, you know, a, a higher high. So until that happens, or until we break above 116, 70, 80, call it roughly, uh, there is also no reason to to discuss, uh, you know, bullish uh, possibilities. So, uh, and, and I'm not even sure that it's going to happen on a Friday, because we don't have much event coming up today. Uh, so nothing much to do there as well. I have to say that FX had a very quiet week, and despite, you know, the jolts we had yesterday from uh, the stock markets, that hasn't really changed. But we can also have a look at a few currency pairs like the Aussie I just want to show the Aussie yen because Blake mentioned it yesterday as well. We are still testing here a triangle support. So if we see some risk of acceleration today and uh, the USD yen moving lower, I think this is, is probably one of the better plays because I remain bearish the Aussie USD and the Kiwi, so if we see some uh, yen strength coming in the market, I think that uh, the Aussie uh, yen at, for at least one more move lower uh, is is quite an interesting, quite a good play. The same thing applies to the Kiwi yen, because as you see, the Kiwi yen uh, has also uh, had a perfect rebound uh, after breaking this like huge tri uh, huge triangle. It rebounded. It retested the uh, the trend line um, uh, support this time as resistance, and from what it seems, it's uh, it's uh, it's breaking lower from uh, here. Of course, this this has not been confirmed because uh, you know we we can easily view this as a short term consolidation, uh, which means that if we break again higher, that's a totally different thing. Uh, but uh, as I said, if yen strength comes uh, through the markets, then this is a good play as well. We do need to see a daily close below 78.50 uh, to to confirm, you know, that more downside is is coming through the market. But until uh, then, I'm just looking at the prospect, looking at the possibility. Okay, let me have a look at uh, a few of the questions until uh, Blake comes here. Blake should be with us very very soon. Uh, China story. Hey Blake. Hey. Okay. You, you, so you want to take over and then look the question, uh, look over your, the questions yourself. How how do you want to do it, mate? It, it's fine. I'll I'll take it. it. You you know it's um it, it's a relatively slow day and uh, as you pointed out, um it is you know despite the the stock market moves that we saw yesterday, I mean the the FX market was very well contained, um and and I think uh, and you were pointing out. The Nikkei, and you were talking a little bit about the Nikkei, and and yeah, this is a really big, and and it was a great point that you brought out, that um, you know, the reversal that we saw, you know, back in um, back here uh, a year ago, um, that big outside week, that that was uh, the night of the election, and uh, we've seen, you know, we haven't seen an outside week here, but we definitely have a reversal candle on the Nikkei. That that's going to be, I, I mean, did, even if we recover a little bit. This is going to be a, either a long upper shadow, big long upper shadow doji, or it's going to be a shooting star, depending on how we close. Um, and and it's a and it, it happened all at pretty key levels too. I mean, if you look at the, um, I'll just go out to the monthly here. I mean that that happened at the 50% retracement of the all-time highs to the the to the you know 2008 lows. Um, and and so the, you know a big reversal. And I think that if you are you know, if you're if you're short yen, um, meaning you're long like yen pairs, which are a very you know er, everybody's long the yen pairs. Um, everybody's you know long them because of uh, uh, yields. Bonds have been stronger, generally speaking, over the course of the last you know year. Uh, everybody's been expecting the dollar yen to play catch up. Everybody's been ex looking at all these yen pairs, saying, okay, they're going to play, they're going to eventually catch up to the uh, to the to the market. Um, and one of the things, when 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 I, I sit here and I analyze things, um, 
you know, a lot of people have a very difficult time seeing the forest behind the trees in the markets, uh, meaning that they all they see is they're very short sighted and they see, you know, they they just they they regurgitate what they hear in them in the media or what they're seeing and they're just like, oh well, you know, well yeah, the interest rates are moving higher, so the dollar yen needs to move higher. But one of the things that kind of clues me in on you know these moves is when you see major divergences of strong generally speaking strong correlations so when you have um the the nikkei that's been blasting higher and you you compare it to the dollar yen okay okay and the the when the correlation breaks down like you see here let me let me grab something really quick so when this breaks down here okay roughly and i'm you know obviously i can be a little bit more precise okay when that correlation really breaks down that's that's at the at that point in time you got to start thinking okay when it won't catch up when a correlation won't follow suit um the the one asset class in this case would be the Nikkei that is a runaway freight train when it gets to a level where it reverses at that point in time you have to be aware of the asset class that, that did not play along and it did not go um, uh, did not follow suit and so you know if, if I have somebody that says well Blake you know all the all the yen pairs are all you know that that's where all the money's going and it's all and, and it's like no it's not you can clearly see it. So if we get a breakdown here, which I, I now looking at the Nikkei, you know, especially if we crack this support here, that once once we crack that support, I say once, but if, if we crack the support, that is a that is a that is a clear indication to me that it's really time to get more aggressive, not pair back. It's time to get more aggressive because that means we're gonna we're probably gonna slump back into the lower end of this range in the yen. Um, and, and so uh, those, those are the types of things when I, when I, when I, you, one of the guys that I, uh, one of the, the gentlemen that owns a firm that I trade with, he, uh, uh, he said to me, he goes, Blake, you're really one of the best people I've met. And I, th this is obviously a huge compliment. I don't like to re repeat things like this to, you know, that's not, I don't like to talk about myself this way, but he said, you, you know, you're one of the best people at seeing turns before they happen. And, and really it's not a, it's not a very scientific way, but it's really divergences or convergences of correlations of generally speaking, very strong correlations really clue me in because what happens is you, you, when you, you get a move in the Nikkei, what's the natural response? And I'm going to ask Steve or Dale, um, when when you get a move in the Nikkei, what's the natural response in the market going to be? To buy what? Or to sell buy U, U.S. dollar yen and sell bonds. Yeah, or sell yen and 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 yeah, you you can yeah. you can buy bonds as well too. Um, or, you know, or or excuse me, sell you gold. Sell bonds. Sell so gold. You would, or you could sell gold. You could uh, you could you could. Um, uh, um, uh, sell bonds, yeah, as yields go up. That that and and when you have one of those asset classes that breaks away, the, the, the thing is, is behavioral response. It it's not it, it does it doesn't just go away instantaneously. What happens is you get everybody pressing, selling yen, and everybody. You, know, you uh, and I I'm using him uh, this example not as a not as a um, uh, negative connotation, but. You, 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 we had Adam Button here last last Friday from Forex Live. What what did he tell you, man? I'll tell you what the do dollar yen's you know uh, you know really wound up in this range, and if it breaks out, you know it's it's gonna it's it's gonna be pretty massive, which I agree. But he he goes with the Nikkei moving higher and yields moving higher, every, you know I'm expecting a breakout. So is everybody else. And if you're expecting a breakout, what do you do? Um, well, most institutions, they will prepare themselves for a breakout by establishing a very long position, in this case, long the dollar yen, they'll, they'll, they'll establish a very long position 
in anticipation of a breakout. And as it breaks out, then they'll start peeling off profits. Everybody does that. I do it. Everybody does it. Okay. Um, but at some point, you know, when you, you, you got the Nikkei, you know, the last two weeks, it, we've gone literally parabolic and the dollar and, and the dollar yen has gone nowhere. And then you start po posting false breakouts like you did on, on, on Friday or on Sunday, excuse me, then you've got a technical issue. Okay. And so the, you know, it, 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 is this, is this trade right now, this short dollar yen trade, is it, is it out of the woods yet? No. I mean, let, let's say that the Nikkei presses another 20% higher. It's gonna, cause then it's going to capture all the people like me that, that got on the short side. It's going to just, it's going to, you know, whip us around and then, you know, I'm going to get stopped out. Okay. So be it. But I still, you know, manage a trade with great risk reward. I still manage a trade with, you know, risk one to make, you know, three, whatever. Okay. It, but, and, and so it could very easily go up and break out. And then, you know, I get stuck on the, the wrong side of a trade. It's, you know, it, it happens. But if we break like this support, this is where I start pressing. That's where I start putting the full full court press on. Meaning I start really, you know, doubling up or tripling my position on the way down, moving all my stops to break even. So this is this, and it's a great setup. And I'm, 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 I've been trying to walk you guys through it for the last, you know, week and a half, two weeks, you know, really actually really trying to do it over the last few weeks right here, you know, and, and I'm trying to do it and, and, and it may, work it may not but it's really at this point in time it's still one of the best setups out there it really is um and and it's going to be a lot nicer too if we can break through 113 because i think the, sh the shot from 113 to 112 which is the 38 percent retracement and the 200 day moving average will probably be up there at that point in time i think it's going to be this this 100 pip shot is i think is 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 the 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 this is the easy money if we do break I say easy money because that's when, you know, if the Nikkei breaks down and the, the dollar yen is going to, you know, follow suit probably fairly aggressively. Now, um, uh, and I'm going to take some questions here in a minute, but Steve also brought up something else. He brought up the euro dollar. Now, um, I did pick up like a really small piece. When I say it's a small piece, it's more of like a tracking, tracking uh, position. Um, I picked up the euro dollar at 25 overnight. Now, I got it a ridiculously great price. And the only reason why I picked it up is because I saw this last night and I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to put in a little, little buy order, you know, knowing that, that we have this little support right through here. I'm like, I'm going to put in a buy order at 25 and see if I can get hit. And I Blake, yes. sorry to interrupt. It's not pretty, but it's also, I mentioned it yesterday. It's also an inverted head and shoulders. If you see, it's not pretty. Yeah, I admit it, it, it is not, and and and, but I was I was more of like, okay, well, if I can just get hit on it, and I I can put in a I put in a really tight stop on my limit order, and it's like I didn't didn't I mean I I it hit with me within three pips, which that never happens. So just let's understand that. But the reason why I'm doing this more, and and I know you talked about the dollar, Steve, is that I know that, and you know, and everybody knows that this is probably the most talked about chart formation in the currency market right now. It's the big head and shoulder in the Euro dollar or the big inverted head and shoulder pattern of the dollar index. That's it. That's like the, that's like, Oh wow. Look, this Euro pound is really coming under pressure. Um, and, and, and so uh, it, this to me was like, okay, I know everybody is aggressively long the dollar and everybody talks about interest rate differentials between Europe and the U S and, and the Euro should be so much lower and the dollar should be so much higher. I get all that. I get the argument. What I haven't seen is I haven't seen the dollar follow through. So price action has been very, you know, very lackluster. And you mentioned Steve, you know, until we get back below here, it's really, you know, a non-starter. And, and I'd agree, you know, if we're, if we are holding above this neckline, really it's, you know, the, the dollar is still in bullish territory. But again, I try to find these moves before they actually happen because once, once everybody's jumping in and everybody's starting to buy 
or everybody's starting to sell, I like to be the guy that's selling it to them or buying it from them. You know what I mean? I like to be the guy on the other end of the trade as momentum is coming in my favor. Okay. So if I'm looking at the dollar index here, if the dollar index does show failure over the course, let's say Monday, you know, of next week, and the dollar starts to break down, I am going to aggressively be buying the euro dollar above 117 because I think the euro dollar above 117, which is the neckline, and we went as high as 116.90 or 92 or 89 or something. If we get above that 117, we will squeeze to 118. Um, hell, we could go even higher than that, depending on what's happening at that point in time. But I think just from a purely technical perspective, it will squeeze the heck out of Euro shorts. And I want to be around for that. My my goal when I trade, and, and this is, you know, and I'm, and I'm prepping you guys because, I mean, here we are 50 pips, 60 pips away from that 117 level. Will we make it there? Maybe, maybe not. And, you know, will I be out of my trade by the time we get there? Possibly. It, I could, you know, I, I haven't moved my stops to break even, but, you know, I could I could get stopped out today, you know, and be like, okay, well, we'll scratch that and I'll have to revisit it on Monday. But the thing is, is if I can get in a trade and I can get a nibble on and I can get a little position going before it happens, once it takes place, once we take hold, Old, and the momentum really starts if I have a good position. So like, let, 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 and I'm walking you guys through this step by step. Okay. I picked up a little piece here overnight, as I explained to you guys, small. I, when I say small, I'm talking quarter of my normal size. Okay. We break above 117 and then we start to squeeze. Well, if we break above 117 and I buy the rest of my position here at 117. Okay. Then I have a quarter of my position that I picked up over here. My cost average is going to be probably 116.80 or so. And if we're if my cost average is 116.80 and we break above 117 and I have an aggressively long position, I can actually put my stops at break even at that point in time and not worry about a trade. All right. And if I can put myself in that situation each and every time, I will. And that's the way I do it, you know, there, there, are, and and look, the, the, there are, and I always tell people this: there are so many ways to skin a cat in this market. There are a thousand different ways. You can, you know, be a scalper and just look for, you know, eight pips with huge size, you know, and you know, you can do that. You can, uh, you know, use smaller positions, wider stops, and look for, you know, more natural swings in the market. I, I do a lot of that, by the way. Um, you can do momentum type of counter trend stuff, like I'm explaining to you. Great. There are so many different ways to trade, and there's, you, everybody has a different lifestyle. Uh, mine's obviously different than yours or anybody else that's listening here. And so what I do doesn't necessarily make it the right way. It's just the way that I do it. And if you can incorporate some of the things that I do into what you do and it makes you more successful, then, hey, you know, like, glad that you're here. Yes. Like, uh, I have a question and I think it will help the community is when you have a bias on a trade like right now, you think there's a possibility for the euro to head up and uh, your short euro yen, how do you psychologically um, ignore the bias in the euro to stay short euro yen? Because if I, if, if my bias is more uh, um, um, bullish yen, then I'm fine. All, all I need is I need the dollar yen to go down faster than the euro dollar would go up. I think the euro dollar's right. upside is limited. Okay. I think the uh, euro's okay. upside is maybe limited to 118. I think the dollar yen's mm -hmm. downside is limited to about okay. 108, 109. So, so you the, have you have a part of the pair in mind that you think is going to carry the trade that is not in conflict with your bias in your exactly as long uh, yeah when, so, right. yeah the, the, yeah that's a, that's a great question. Um, you know if because I can I can be long the euro, short the yen, and short the euro yen, and still make money on all three trades. I just right. need the dollar yen to go down a lot faster than the euro goes up, which Looking at the Nikkei, okay, so I'm going to have to take us back to the Nikkei. So looking at the Nikkei and seeing what we see here and seeing what we see here, here's your weekly candle, right? 
if the Nikkei corrects from let's say 22,400 where we're, we're at right now, let's say it corrects to like 20, 21,000 or 21, five or maybe all the way down to 21,000, which is the breakout point, that in itself will probably take the dollar yen down to 110 pretty easily. Okay. And that won't, that doesn't even disrupt the, the, the Nikkei's uptrend. You know what I mean? And, and I can pretty much, I, I can't guarantee you anything, but I, I'll tell you, there's a really strong possibility that if the Nikkei corrects like this, the Euro yen is going to go down. The pound yen is going to go down. The Aussie yen is going to go down. The New Zealand yen is going to go down. The Canadian yen, the Mexican, the peso yen, every, every yen pair will go down. Yeah. Um, maybe minus, you know, there might be one or two pairs that don't based on some, you know, maybe news, you know, maybe, you know, something happens with Brexit and the pound yen bucks the trend. But for the most part, the, they will all correct with the Nikkei. I strongly believe that. So if I do believe the Nikkei is going to come down, which I do based on everything that's happened the last two days, I believe the Nikkei is probably, you know, looking, looking at a, a fairly substantial correction from where we're currently at you know what's a you know what what is a um a 10 percent correction you know 22 2200 points you know 2200 points is right here take us down here or uh t down all the way down here you know maybe a five seven percent correction would take us that back down here um let's see that would be you know from where we're currently at Damn it, I grabbed the wrong thing. Hold on. Yeah, I mean that's that's a six percent correction. If if we correct from 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 where we're currently at down to the breakout point, that's a six percent correction. That to me seems very logical based on the chart pattern that we're seeing, that that could happen in the next couple of weeks. So um, yeah, so again, that that and that that was a great question Dale that was a really great question um, let, let, me, let me see if there's any other questions on this Friday Lake uh, yes we, we, we have several of them but since you mentioned the euro yen and that's uh, something I forgot to say I don't know um, if you've seen that because this is something that we we see very rarely if you go to the euro yen daily chart and zoom in further, you'll see that this is the fourth consecutive day that we have an extremely, extremely small body on the candle, extremely. Just, just, just look at this consolidation. We've had three, three, pin bar, three pin bars in a row, and so far today has been a doji. Uh, so it's, it's, it's more than obvious that the market has completely stalled here and it's unable to move. The reason I'm saying that is that usually when we see uh, such rare, uh, you know, three, four days consolidations with so small uh, bodies, usually with the next move we're going to see, uh, you know, break this out of this consolidation, usually it's going to have follow through. I just wanted to, you know, to. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's good. It's good to point out. Hey, hey, Steve, can, can you do me a favor? Can you take over for just a couple of minutes, like maybe two sure. or three? Okay, here, of course, I'm, I'm going to start. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to start uh, looking into questions until you get back. I'll be right back. Absolutely. Okay, Steve. You there? Yes, mate, I'm here. Sorry, my mistake. I, I muted my microphone in, instead of unmuting it. Oh. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the cable. Let's have a look at the cable. Uh, we already looked at the cable before. I said it's in the middle of the triangle, so nothing much to say here, but people also want to know from what I see about the pound Aussie and the pound Kiwi. Okay, listen. Now, having to do with the pound Aussie, this is what I'm, I'm looking at in the pound Aussie. It's the possibility of this ascending triangle uh, if that's the case, then uh, we can even expect, you know, a push uh, to new highs. This horizontal uh, support held this time. Um, so I would say that 
recently uh, the, the pound also have, has been you know during the past couple of weeks has been very choppy but if I was obliged to choose uh, you know a direction I would probably look higher and that's simply because I'm definitely more bearish anyhow the uh, the Aussie uh, than uh, the pound now on the other hand pound Kiwi pound Kiwi has even uh, uh, has even the potential of having finished the corrective move lower. This is what I marked yesterday for yesterday's analysis, this triangle, uh, which we, we are testing at the moment. So especially if we if we get a daily close above 190.90, I think that uh, you know what we're seeing is what we were guessing since some time ago. Uh, you know, I had drawn that many many days ago that we might push higher then come down to correct somewhat and then push higher once again so um, I, I've said many many times that I remain bullish the pound kiwi uh, despite it correcting lower and I think that a break above this little high up here uh, this one here uh, that I have my mouse pointer on probably confirms uh, this theory so I, I find it possible that we've, we've seen the low of the correction uh, we, we still need more confirmation but uh, you know that's what I see as more likely than not okay so we had a look at those what is a good level to buy the Dow future says Arif let's have a look at it Arif um, if your question is a long-term question I would guess 14,000 <laughs> I, I would I would re be really looking into buying in a Dow at fourteen thousand two hundred. You know that's that's a good support level. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm, no, I'm I'm not kidding actually. But uh, you know that's a long longer term view. At some point when indices crash, at some point, which is going to happen. It's as always unavoidable. All the the talks about new paradigm, permanent permanent high plateau, and all all, all the BS we've heard in the past past plenty times again and again and again we all know how they work out you know wh whenever you have a bull market it always overextends whenever it overextends there is always a lot of speculation and talk about how this can keep on uh, happening for years for example the other day I made a comment on Twitter uh, on a CNBC comment CNBC posted we can expect the bull market to run eight to ten more years strategist Jeff South says ten to ten more years we, we are already like more than eight years in an uptrend and somebody is smart enough to think that we can extend a parabolic uptrend for 16 to 20 years in total I mean it has never happened in the past but some some you know some big brain thinks that yeah this, this is going to be the time that's going to happen a time that the fundamentals have been worse in the past etc is going to be the time that we're going to extend the bull market to 16 18 years yes of, of course but these are the headlines you usually see much closer to a top than anything else um, a good level to buy the uh, the Dow if we confirm a break below this is probably going to be somewhere between 22 and a half thousand and 22 to 22 and a half thousand I would say Arif all right Steve sorry I'm back Oh, welcome back, mate. You can take over. I I, I took questions from uh, the top, uh, although I haven't checked what Luca said actually. Well, now that I'm seeing Luca, Luca has some charts he wants to show about um, USD yen. Uh, I, I just answered the question about where is a good support level for the Dow, and we also had a look at all the pound pairs. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. He goes. Um, situation where Nikkei corrects calmly, but the rest of the market um, uh, goes goes up for Christmas rally, and the dollar yen goes back up with the yields. Yeah, I mean, it, this is one one of the things I was looking at last night too. And and look look at the look at the rally in yields. Okay, this is this is this is the the this is you know ten year yields. We got a bull flag pattern again. What, what what's it done to the dollar yen not much not much at all all right so this rally back in yields is just not not really not yielding anything um with the market and you know 
everybody okay so let, let's 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 also let's also talk about seasonality everybody expects a christmas rally okay everybody also expected a, a sell off um you know uh you know this this summer which we never got and the 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 disappointment that we've seen in just in yesterday in the in the the new and improved i i say that you know tongue in cheek the new improved tax plan that we've got um really you know the market was very un, unimpressed with it and we've long said steve and uh and 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 we've 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 said this for for the last month you know when the stock the stock market's probably going to go down when 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 the tax plan gets approved you know in its final form when it gets approved you know especially it's, if it's underwhelming but I, I know exactly what you mean like uh, yeah. buy the rumors sell the news type of thing yeah. of course so could it could it squash the a, a santa claus rally absolutely it could you know i'm not saying it's going to but you know sure there's that risk i mean seasonality has kind of broken its its correlations over the last uh last you know uh, definitely uh, that, that's what i want to say sure. that people that are going to claim seasonality and the santa claus rally are the same people that if you believe in seasonality then you should also believe in sell in may and go away and the usual thing but but i mean or that september's are very volatile etc and we've had how, how many months has it been that we haven't seen a volatile month i can't even remember yeah and 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 if and if you believe in seasonality you should probably still believe in santa claus i'm just kidding i'm <laughs> just that's a really bad <laughs> joke anyway um uh the there is an old expression, though, oh, guys. Oh no! Are you yeah. going to say we the we feast in Thanksgiving? Bear. Yeah, the bears do. <laughs> so go ahead, say it again. The bears feast. <laughs> Stop <laughs> being a mind reader. <laughs> <laughs> now I forgot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> bears bears feast on Thanksgiving. The bulls in, on Christmas. You know, okay. it's one of those. You know. Buy got on it. Yom Kippur, you know, sell on Rosh Hashanah. Anyway, right. got it. Got Thanksgiving's it. When, uh, two weeks away. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Thanksgiving is a couple weeks away. I mean, we, God, yeah. it is a couple weeks away, and I'm hosting something over my house too, which oh, reminds God. me of something that I've got to do this weekend. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, yeah, we have like a, a family. It, it's like working with Kreskin, man. You know, what? I know it's, you probably, you. I, no, anyway, I don't even. Blake, oh, okay. I'm turning my mic off because Blake can read my mind. Hey, hey, right. uh, you know, listen, I, I'm I'm probably not going to be able to address a bunch of other questions, but I I wanted to say this because it is um, obviously the Marine Corps birthday, which uh, November 10th every year is a special day for myself, um, having served in the Marine Corps, and um, uh, uh, being an old infantry guy, I you know I was uh, always loved to. Love to talk about the Marine Corps and whatnot, but how many um, years is, now, Blake? Since I've been out? No, no, the the Marine Corps. Oh, 242. 242. Wow. Yeah, I've been out for let's see, I've been out since '94. So I've been yeah. out for 23, 24 years now, um, which is you know it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, because. Is you know it's I, I was because you know I started my 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 career as a stockbroker um, as I was in college you know uh, two years year and a half out of, out of the military so anyway maybe you, could, I, maybe you should consider re-upping no yeah they wouldn't take my I I couldn't even run to my mailbox and back um, <laughs> this is horrible this is horrible I have my physical physical fitness yeah whatever. Anyway, um, but I, uh, but it is Veterans Day here, recognize Veterans Day here in the United States, uh, and 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 I always like to tell you know people, no matter where you served, uh, whether as you know Steve, you served in the, uh, the 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 Grecian Army during the period of 300, or you, uh, I'm just kidding, <laughs> just joking again, really bad Friday jokes. Anyway, it, it, no matter where you served and what country or what military you served for, thank you for your service because it's. It's you all that really keep our world free, and um, so thank you all for your service, each and every one of you. And if you if you didn't serve in the military, um, you know, hey, when you when you see a, a, a military member 
you know, sometime today or maybe throughout the weekend, make sure you thank them. Like I said, no matter where they live, uh, no matter where they're from, and no matter what armed services they served in, whether it was, you know, Brit British RAF or, you know, the Greek military. Or the North you know, Korean <laughs> Army. <laughs> the North Korean Army. Don't thank them. <laughs> Don't thank them. Yeah, stick a firecracker in their shoe. Um, anyway, uh, anyway, happy Veterans Day to everybody out there. And Dale, I know you have a, a, a an interview, and I don't want to I don't want to take up any more time. So thank you guys, and have a great, wonderful weekend. And um, and and Dale, it's all yours. Thank you, Blake. I salute you, bro. Raymond, Thanks, stand by. I'm making you the presenter. It's been quite a while since you and I had a conversation, so I'm very much looking forward to it. I've just passed you the baton, so looking forward to hearing your voice and seeing your screen. We can talk about what's on your radar. I also want to catch up with you, buddy. I think I hear you at a party. Okay. Hi, Dad. Okay, Ray, Raymond, Hi. can you hear me? Hi, Dale. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Great to talk to you again. How long has it been? Um, a year and a half. Okay. So I, I know uh, you're from Ghana, and one of your goals, exactly. in, and one of your goals and missions was to make forex. Uh, more awareness of being able to trade as a way for people to lift themselves out of uh, uh, stagnant situations and possible not great employment opportunities. So um, how's that been going for you? What have you been doing the last year and a half? Well, um, pretty much the same thing. Uh, we've been training a lot of people. Um, we are trying to start up uh, a money management. We used to manage some money, uh, but we want to do it a more organized way. Uh, but uh, most of our time has been taken by uh, training services. Um, we have a training center and that we have uh, individuals come in um, almost every day for some training. Okay. So we, have, we, so we actually so have a, a physical location for people to come. And, uh, exactly. And exactly. Uh, that's for like a classroom. Yes, we do have with a, a computer set up for people to uh, download the platforms and learn how to trade. So how many people do you have uh, attending that or in the well, classroom? Okay, because it's a daily thing, um, today we had four people and then it's in that uh, number, you know, we have four or five people every single day coming in for training. And the training is supposed, uh, is eight weeks, and each section is just an hour. So what are your main teaching teachings, Raymond, that you're sharing with people that come in? I know you have to cover a lot of the basics, you know, like, you know, what is exactly. Forex, what is leverage? But when yeah. it gets to the trading aspect of teaching people, what kind of methodologies are you sharing with them? What are you teaching them? But well, we're basically looking at trend following and uh, momentum based strategies, but they are trend following strategies. Um, we want okay. to be very simple, not complicated. Um, but there are a lot of complicated systems out there. They also work pretty well. But however, we believe in the simplicity of things and then uh, we use a few um, oscillators, a uh, few indicators for traders to learn, master, and then... Right, why, uh, don't, why don't you uh, show your setup so I could see what right, so you're sharing basically, with me. Okay, good. Basically, um, do, you, do you see my screen, my Excel sheet? Yeah, I see. All right, it. So, so it starts from here. Um, when you start the technical bit, we want people to understand what the ATR is and it starts first by measuring the ATR. So uh, for the daily trades, because we learn how to trade on the daily chart and then the hourly chart as well. Um, so that depending on your work shadow or, um, you know, change in environment or change in anything, you can trade the daily charts or you can trade intraday if you're not uh, working or uh, you are young graduates from a university, you focus on the intraday timeframe so that it becomes a skill that you can build and it becomes your job. 
However, we have some engineers, some supervisors, some uh, medical doctors coming in for training. And these guys work in the daytime, so um, they focus or we make sure we teach them the daily end of day training so that they train on their daily chart so that they are free to do their uh, work as in uh, original work. So we start from here where we teach people um, to go to the chart and look for the ATR settings. If it's a monthly chart, if you can see my cursor. And so, I can. So uh, yeah. I'm not sure about the time zone you're in. What time is it there right now? Well, it's afternoon. It's, uh, it's 2 05 afternoon. 2 okay. 05. So yeah. are, you, are you mainly trade? Are you up early enough to trade Europe and then the U.S.? Is, are those yeah, two sessions? Interestingly, Ghana has the best clock in the world because we see the whole of London and we see the whole yeah. of U.S. New York. So yeah, uh, we is. have the best clock. We have the best clock. So right. by seven o'clock we are behind our charts, and then uh, up to about nine p.m. in the evening, when uh, New York is going to sleep. Uh, we can set up our daily trades. So we have the best clock in the world. Maybe you should move to Ghana and start trading from Ghana. <laughs> okay. So, so, I, so basically, look, you know what? That that actually is a good reason, you know, because mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, many time zones aren't as forgiving. And exactly, they, exactly. And they cut into your living your life. So, okay. So uh, it's afternoon there, and go ahead. You're talking about your ATRs. Yeah, so basically, uh, all traders must understand the ATR, how to read the ATR. Interestingly, um, MT4s have a challenge. Uh, MT4 is one of the most popular platforms. However, uh, it has its own challenge in the sense that uh, most of the MT4s around don't give you precise ATR readings. Uh, some of them will give a very low reading. Some of them will give an average reading. However, we found uh, only the MT4s that give very good ATR reading. How be it? Uh, if you're not sure of the ATR readings, you can check Trading View that gives very accurate ATR readings, which you they will use a lot. And yeah. then uh, uh, Net Dania, I have been using Net Dania for nine years. You can get very accurate ATR readings from there. Uh, it's, well, so far, it's only one MT4 platform that we realize that the ATR readings are equal to what is on Trading View and what is on. Uh, okay, so Net once Dania. you've uh, defined, so, so once you define your brain, different time frames mm -hmm. on your ATR. What do you mm -hmm. teach exactly. about that? That people so basically, look for about 50% of uh, an ATR? Okay, that's, uh, go ahead. That's good. Before I move to my chart, um, traders should be looking at um, dividing the ATR into three sections. We have the 35%, we have the 25%, and 20%. Now, the 75% we call that a probable range. That is, if there's a setup, uh, the setup is likely to travel effectively and quickly within the 75% of the existing ATR. And then within that, we are looking at making 25% of that. So for example, in the total ATR and then to take a daily trade or a daily chart, we use a monthly ATR. And then the 75% is uh, the probable range. So if you have a trade, you're looking at making 104, 104, and then you're looking at risking 83, Pips, which is a 20% of the ATR. So if you have a setup and uh, if you measure the high of the period, not the particular kind that we'll get to the chart soon, and then the close, and then it consumes all the 75% of the uh, probable range, even though your target will be, it will, will, will be within the uh, monthly ATR, you don't have to take the trade because the probability of you uh, filling or of you getting your profit has been drastically reduced. So in that thing, you have to ignore the trade. Uh, this part is very important and it's, uh, it's deep in statistics. So it, it makes it very comfortable when you're trading. So uh, let me look at something here. All right, uh, let me go. Okay, anyway, let me just use this one quickly and I, I can drop it down, this is my live chart. Um, so for example, let's, let's use this. If you're trading on the chart and then you have a set okay we look at a few indicators 72 moving average we look at the MACD, we look at the rsi and we look at the cci for example if there's a position here to be taken okay and what we do is we measure the close here to the low okay a 104 a 105 pips going away and this pairs uh total atr is 205. so you measure you, you know the probable range 
on the other day. So uh, it's 206. So it's done 105. So you, you left it about um, um, 50 pips, give or take 50 pips in there. Now your target is 51 pips, pretty close. It's a trade you can take because it's almost within the proper bull range. However, if the market had moved, let's say 190 or 200 pips, that means it's consumed the whole ATR and it's going beyond the proper bull range. So no matter how juicy and how nice it looks like, it's not a trade you should be interested in entering. Uh, so these are the two trades. I know earlier on I thought we could discuss it, but I guess I got the time wrong. So basically, those are the things we look at. We look at um, what is expected of the. We measure it from the period with the help of the MT4 period separator. If you have a setup here, you have to measure the close and then the low within the section. That will give you an idea of how much pip is gone. Then when you subtract it from your 75% probable range, it tells you how much is left. If right. how much is left is within your target, the 25% target, then you have a trade. So this is very robust. It helps to trade and it helps to take in batteries. Similarly, uh, if you go onto the monthly chart, okay, for demonstration purposes, this chart is the same approach. Uh, you take your ETF from the monthly and then you take your trade here. And over here, we don't really use much of the uh, moving average. We can sometimes draw one or two trend lines. But the main idea is uh, uh, after back testing the market uh, from 1986 to now, we fortunately had a back testing software we call Prosper. It's probably it's Prosper. It was designed by a company in, uh, in New Zealand and part of business in Malaysia. Uh, the company is called T Mata. Um, it's, it's run by uh, gentleman who's been trading as long as you have been trading uh, it's called Wayne Wayne Wayne, Wayne McDonald no Wayne yeah it's Wayne so he oh, yeah, yeah. Wayne. Wayne Wayne does NFPs on uh FX no, no, not, no not Wayne FX uh, NFPs it's another Wayne it's another Wayne okay yeah. all right yeah it's another you Wayne know, I, I have to say that this is a very um at least from people I've interviewed, and I'm, clo I'm closing in on a thousand. You're the first guy yeah. that the foundation of their methodology is ATR. So yes. uh, yeah. interesting that uh, this, you know, everything stems from knowing what a market can do based on ranges on different time frames. Very, you know. Uh, kudos to you, Raymond. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So you know, uh, just to digress. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. J just to digress a bit. Uh, I, I feel you should have a special uh, certificate from Del Pinkett because I believe that, irrespective of how long you've been in the market, if you have not been in the market for more than 30 years, I think everybody should still take a few days with Del to, to get a special Del Pinkett certificate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That well, would be a nice idea. This was two you're, days. you're getting yours yeah. today, so I, I hope you have a yeah, nice. Okay. okay. <laughs> you're getting yours today. I hope you find a nice place to hang it over your. Hey, I will. I will. I will. I will. All I right. will. <laughs> so it's an eight. <laughs> it's, a, it's an eight by ten glossy autograph picture. I will. Uh, I will love it. All right. I'm, I'm serious. Dude. You have to send it. To me. I'm going to bring it to you today and take a picture and send back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have fans. So yeah, uh, yeah. because we we uh, we pick a lot from you, um, your courage uh, beyond your training capabilities, also your spiritual part motivates a lot of us here. So um, you know, I look at your work all the time, and then this one uh, just digressing a bit, and we'll come back. To this the two people you've interviewed that I really like their work, Lydia, Lydia, uh, yeah, yes. Lydia Pinkley. I really like yes. her work. And there's one who you're yet to interview on face. You've interviewed him at La. Um, uh, this is an engineer, uh, Shivakyu, Chris Shivakyu. Oh, OK. Yeah, these are yeah. the only two that, you know, they blow my mind anytime I listen to them. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, who's, uh, who's Chris with nowadays? Wasn't he with uh, uh, FX Daily for a long time? No, 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 Chris Chivacchio, Chris Chivacchio is not, uh, he, he runs Chivacchio Capital. Uh, I think I can find him okay. here for you. Uh, 
Uh, All right, well, uh, just uh, yeah. send me his Twitter handle when you have a chance later, and I'll invite him. Yeah, exactly. You interviewed him yeah. while. Uh, this, is, this is his face. You can see his face. Because you remember him? I, okay. Oh, yeah, Chris, yeah. Uh, the stock market guy. Yeah, okay. Exactly. He does great Amazing, work. Yeah. Very disciplined. Yeah. 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 Yeah, okay. Now, I knew we told him to dissipate to him. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so are you trading? Because so, he mainly he mainly covers stocks and the stock yeah, market. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. So you, you're trading other business. instruments besides FX. Well, the side effects, uh, sometimes you go into indices a bit, but the main focus is on FX because uh, with FX, uh, there are a lot of moves you can uh, you can get to jump on a lot of moves. And it's easier yeah. to trade FX. With FX, uh, I'm a technician, so I don't really look to the news, even though we have Bloomberg TV in our office. I don't really watch it. It's just for customers to excite their eyes and watch, but I, I don't really care about the news. Uh, because there's too much information there I cannot digest, I cannot process. So I look at the numbers and yeah. when I see the price chart, I see something happening, and, you know, I box it up, I look at the ATR, I look at my monthly, I look at how much of the market is already gone, how much is left within the ATR, and I buy my position. So basically that I look at my RSI and I do, uh, use the CCR because uh, RSI is very effective, but there are some times where um, you have the market experiencing a higher high, and then uh, RSI will give you some sentiment of a divergence. It usually happens with the RSI sometimes. So when it happens, okay. we look at the CCI, and if the CCI is above a positive habit, should we be in a bullish mood? Then that gives us more confidence that the RSI was giving us just a higher low, a positive market, but not the divergence, and then we can still take our position. So basically, that's interesting. Uh, we look at the market. Yeah, Ar Arman Shaya tried to teach me that because he uses CCI with RSI. So exactly. uh, Arman yes. used to be in Lara a lot. So, oh, um, I see. I see. Yeah, so you picked it up. Uh, so uh, let me ask you this with what's happened mm -hmm. here in the last few weeks, do you have any biases or uh, trades on the radar on a you know daily basis or so that you're excited about? Going into this, uh, going into the end of the year. Uh, going to the end of the year, um, trades that were taken today were just a pound US dollar and a pound AUD by my staff. Now, uh, for me, I cannot tell what I was going. I'm sure some people can do that, but I cannot do that. I really look at what the market is saying now. I have my eyes on the um, EU dollar for next week. Okay, I believe yeah. that the euro dollar should be setting up to go long for next week. So I'm looking at it, the MACD is trying to get bullish. Uh, CCI is speaking, okay, so yeah. looking at, I'm looking at some time, maybe Wednesday, uh, yeah. to get the bias for a buy. However, if things changes, I'm going to change my position. So uh, I, I usually say that I don't have more than a, a minute to guess of the market. I want to be in the market to make okay. profit. But to say, well, the dollar is going to be that's this fair. In 500 or trade, one trade one what's in front of you now. Yeah. What, yeah those four me, caps are nice. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure some people have the skill and the capacity to do that. Some people can understand the fundamentals oh. and add it to up and do that. For, for me, all I have is a minute guess or an hour guess. I mean, here we are. I'm looking up to sometime Tuesday for me to play a good setup. TCR, RSR, might be looking good. But however, if it doesn't work out and it goes to a short, I'm going to short. So uh, I don't write a forecast. Um, no, I don't write a forecast. Just looking at what's in front of me and how it's going to do well. So basically, that's uh, how we look at a market. Over the, uh, the course of a uh, few weeks ago, we had very good um, Australian dollar where we had some very nice shots coming in for us to take. And uh, that's how we pretty much look at the market. We are technicians. Uh, oftentimes, people come with a lot of fundamental views, but I was mentored by a technician, and I like the technical part of the business. Fundamentals is too much information for me. I, I know people have used it. People can use it. So, yeah, I mean, when you listen to Lydia, she talks about she understands some of these things, but I, I just, uh, I'm just a numbers guy. I mean, so I look at what is in front of me. 
So why don't we do this now, Raymond? Why don't you show your website or your blog or uh, this is oh, amazing, amazing. Time. Okay. Yeah? amazing, amazing, amazing. Excuse me. What is my website? Yeah, this is my website. Uh, I call uh, myself a no, glorified. You know, for how people, how people could get a hold of you and uh, follow you. Uh, there we go. So, uh, do you have a website or a blog? Yeah, I have a website. It's called Akim Forex. Uh, the vision of this website is to help you accumulate uh, money, you know, make more money. The whole idea is taking from the word accumulation. So we just acting in Forex and, uh, you know, okay. in Ghana, this is my direct phone right. number. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, for now we are, we are glorified ID. I call myself where we are in association with a number of brokers that gives us uh, MT4 platforms to use. Uh, basically, it's a website. We have a few articles here for myself and some friends of mine. And then uh, this is my Twitter handle, uh, to Ray Avor. And uh, basically that. Nice sight. So I was wondering, so, uh, how, uh, yeah. do you, do you, uh, what kind of account do you have to set up down there in Ghana to trade U.S. equities? How do you trade U.S. No, equities uh, from there? Now, we don't have an indigenous FX platform in Ghana. All brokers here or all IBs here rely on uh, platforms who are brought. So if okay. there's any platform, it's either FX. FX Pro, uh, TTCM, FXCM, uh, Worldwide Market. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, we rely on these platforms. And then we wire either by Visa or back wire to these platforms. Our market, as far as uh, this is concerned, is yet to be developed properly. So okay. The uh, so now, we are getting a little bit. We can't wrap this without uh, me coming asking in. you. We can't wrap this without me asking you. Were you able to wrap your head around this whole crypto thing and take advantage of it? Um, uh, it's been running a lot, but my challenge was, yeah, cryptocurrency, that's BTC, Bitcoin, look at Bitcoin as uh, the main cryptocurrency. Um, it's growing, it's become very noisy. Even in Ghana, a lot of people are choosing just to buy from blockchain, whichever side they can buy from. But from the chart perspective, um, I haven't bought any yet. The reason is that uh, there's not enough quantitative data for me to work with. Uh, back testing doesn't give me enough information. Uh, no. So I am sort of laid back a bit, yes, because uh, I'm not able to back test uh, much because from 9th, 2009, or was it 2013 till now, there's not enough data. It has just been around the past six to eight months. So there's not enough information for me to do any practice because I want to practice my oscillators to get some numbers, then I can apply my technical analysis to it. But for now, I'm not, I don't, I'm flat. I don't have any positions in BTC, maybe next year. Okay. I'll start trading well, some of it, but for now, I'm not having any positions. It was nice talking to you today, Raymond. Uh, I, you know, I'm glad that you're still on the journey. Dale, you're a wonderful person. Yeah, it's not an easy journey. I mean, you get you get money and sometimes you get bent a bit, but it's part of the journey. Yeah. So, and I'm glad that you're uh, persisting, and looks like you're you know paying it forward, helping others uh, learn uh, what you know. Exactly. And uh, that's you know to me that's the most re rewarding part of what I do is helping others along and helping them avoid the landmines that. I've stepped on in my life. Exactly. So uh, I, I think you make things. I think you make things very simple. Uh, if people can just follow you as a, they're going to stop the pain they are going through. All the landmines, landmines will be removed because you see, when you have a mentor, you shorten the learning cycle and you take away pain. If you have a mentor, I had a mentor when I started very early, and it helped a lot. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people who come to listen to you shouldn't just listen, but should get closer and seek for mentoring from there. If they can get mentoring, I tell you what, within one year, a year and a half, they will start making consistent money. They need mentoring. A lot of people need mentoring. Okay. 
So I think that there should be an avenue that should be open for people to get their mentoring from there. And you're an amazing guy, trust me. Well, I'm still on the planet, right, bro? Because life is fragile. Yeah. So anyway, uh, exactly. thank you for the testimonial <laughs> and the commercial. And really, uh, thank you, I sir. think about you a lot, my friend. And uh, for yeah. the duration, you are my trading warrior brother. So thank you so thank much you. for being here today. And may pips rain down you. on you and, and your words teach and bless everyone you come in contact with, my friend. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Dave. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. So. Oh, You're very Bye. welcome, Raymond. So, okay, everyone, that's a wrap. Hope you had a great week. Happy Veterans Day. I salute Blake Morrow and everyone else who had more courage than I to get in the line of fire. So, good hunting. And you know what I believe in, my friends. Don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And I think that with some of the input this week, you have plenty of pips to count. Use a couple and sign up if you're not a member and enjoy your weekend and see everyone Monday for another great week. I have a great lineup of guests next week. Look forward to collaborating with each and every one of you. Enjoy your weekend.